Wow, four American cowboys have found their way to the West Bank. This group, uh, with three young men from Man Montana, another from Arkansas, saw what happened on October 7th as the terror attacks by Hamas unfolded. They all wanted to do something to help the people of Israel. And just a few days ago, they arrived in the Middle East and are now working in the West Bank, helping Jewish settlers with their land. As several are in the IDF reserves, they've had to leave their farms, their families, and be called up to the front lines. So joining me now, we have the Cowboys live. We have Joshua Waller, John Ploker, Ezekiel Strain, Yosef Strain, and Luke Hutzler. Uh, this is a first, guys, that we are being joined by guests in cowboy hats and plaid and denim from the Middle East. Thank you for taking the time. How are y'all? Hey, we're doing good. Thanks for having us on. Thank you for your time this morning. Uh, you have quite the remarkable story. Could you take us back, one of you, um, to October 7th? You guys see what's happening and unfolding in Israel at the hands of Hamas. This is a time when most people are trying to get out of the Middle East. A war is breaking out. But what made you all decide, hey, we're going to pack our bags and be there? You know, honestly, I'm the director of operations here. I've been working here for 20 years. And as soon as the war broke out on October 7th, I gave uh, some buddies back home a call and said, hey, we guys, we need help here big time. And uh, honestly, these guys are massive heroes. Uh, they jumped in here. A lot of these guys left crops in the fields and you know, uh, Zeke here left a couple hundred bales of hay, well, a couple thousand tons of hay out in the field that's still sitting there now wow. just to get here immediately. Yeah. And for you other guys who answered that phone call, I mean, was that a, a hard decision or was that immediate for you to agree? Uh, it was it was pretty quick. I know for a lot of us, uh, when the war happened, when the attack happened, uh, our hearts immediately broke for Israel. And um We'd already determined that we would do whatever we could to help. And actually, uh, we were working on a project um, before we came here to raise funds to help send over here to help. We were building sheds and selling them. So then Josh called and said that he that they needed help here. This, the people here in Judea and Samaria needed our help. And uh, so it was pretty quick. I mean, pretty much immediately once he called, we knew we wanted to go, so. Yeah, well, I know so many of those families, those farmers there are, are so thankful for you. Um, how remarkable. And I know before we get to the work that you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis, I wanna pop up this photo if our producers can. You guys had a bit of a viral moment on your way to the Middle East, mm -hmm. uh, a picture of the five of you at the airport, uh, you know, you got your bags, you got your hats on, you're ready to rock and roll. This was shared a lot on social media. Why do you think this yeah. got so much attention before your work even began? Um, I think, you know, for me, it's humbling to even that I could encourage the people here in Israel that much. Um, and really, honestly, I think it's just because they feel so alone, the whole world. Uh, they feel like nobody's uh, really with them. Um, they've There was a shipment of uh, guns and stuff to come over from the Biden administration. And he said it specifically wasn't come to come to Judea and Samaria, uh, referred to by everybody else as the West Bank. And they feel like they're alone out here. And so when they saw that there's actually people that care about them and want to come help, I think it was a huge encouragement to them. Yeah. And you're making them feel like they're not alone and they're not forgotten. Now, you're talking about the West Bank. We see the land that you're standing on now, fellas. You know, uh, you're helping these Jewish settlers with their land there. I'm, I'm sure maybe even their animals, too. Tell us more about the work that you're doing now uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure. You know what? They're, like you said, the situation is really dire with the farms. They just don't have the help here. So, you know, we're not going to be able to do it all, but we're sure working hard. I mean, these guys, we, we uh, just today... Boy, we put a full day in uh, yeah. sweating buckets out here. Uh, I can't imagine. A little imagine. warmer than Montana. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we're working on the farms. We're doing whatever we can to help uh, see these guys, number one, be successful. We don't want these farms to be lost in such a horrible time. The, the nation of Israel needs these guys strong, and we also we want to see Israel strong. We want to see these farmers strong. We want to see these communities. Uh, ultimately, we want to see these people safe uh, yeah. from the danger that yeah. uh, surrounds them. Hey, do y'all look different from Israeli farmers? Are y'all all wearing the same thing, or do y'all yeah. y'all y'all sticking out no, like a definitely. sore thumb we, right we now? St we stick out. There's uh, <laughs> it's even the newspapers around here. I read one that said uh, uh, cowboys with their skinny jeans. I was like, that's not cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> sticking out like sore thumbs. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Hey, y'all look great. What's it like working on the land, though? That's the other thought I had this morning. 
You know, is it completely different in a new place? Is it the same as working on, you know, a ranch or a farm in Montana and Arkansas? Or are you getting a whole new education in foreign farming? I tell, I, I tell people all the time, I say, you know, when you read the Bible, because, you know, we're all Bible-believing folks. We grew, grew up reading the Bible. And sure. and uh, there's nowhere in the Bible that ever talked about farming in, in Tennessee, where I'm from, and, and uh, certainly not in Montana or anywhere else. But it's sure packed full of the stories of this area. I mean, right here where I'm sitting, where we work in every day now, there's 85% of the Bible literally takes place in this Judea and Samaria range. So uh, to be working in an area like this, I mean, it's so, so uh, incredibly, uh, you know, it's like potent. It's, it's so yeah. uh, incredibly uh, powerful just to be here and see the places uh, and connect so much to the, even the Bible. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.